Hello, everybody. How you doing? So welcome, my name is John Skippy Limkul. This is a live stream. We are going to be focusing on this library, colors, and how we can personalize it. Ways we can do things differently to make it unique to you, right? Because it's, it's one thing to call up the patches and, and it's fun to play with what's there, but it's not that hard to change it. And when you're working on a track, one of the most important things to learn is to take the sounds that you're working with and make sure that they are working for you and working in the track the way that you want. So, um, yeah, so that's the plan. So anyway, welcome. This library is on my website right here. Colors for Keyscape. It's at an introductory price that will go to $39 on August 11th. Um, we have other demos in the works. Wait till you hear what's coming. It's pretty amazing. I have at my website, uh, let's see if we should log out, uh, 80 different libraries for all sorts of plugins. So if you need something for Serum, for Contact, for Atmosphere 2, Native Instruments, Break Tweaker, um, a whole lot of stuff for Spire, Malicious, we've got a library that's really cool for Slint. Uh, Toxic Zebra is our Zebra 2 library. Make sure you check those out if you need some inspiring patches for your favorite plugins. And I, as always, I thank you right now for your support. Um, what a great live stream this is going to be. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Biggie says, you should be called Santa Claus. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So, and I have a rant. I have a small rant. Um, a couple rants, when I think about it. A couple things I, I want to say something about. One of them is this Katy Perry, uh, Katy Perry lawsuit is bogus. Um, there's a really great video I just watched. I should put a link in the live stream to this on, it's on YouTube. Um, that really breaks it down. And it's, it, Rick Beato did a good one. This is a different one that just came out that uh, really sets it straight. So here, let me do this. Let me copy this. Um, you cannot, you cannot copyright uh, the minor scale and stuff like that right so if you have time after this live stream if you want to watch this it really sets um in in <clears throat> perspective the lawyer for the the flame side is basically saying that since like the 90s there haven't been melodies like this it's just pathetic and it will have a huge impact if this is allowed to stand as it is so i really hope it can be Overturned. It also seems really unfair that Katy Perry wasn't able to defend her side. The speakers didn't work. I want to know more about that because that doesn't. This sounds like uh, like witness tampering, almost like you know you can't say your side of it. I can't play you my song, but they can play their song. Or I, I don't know what the story is behind that, but I've read enough about that that it's uh, uh, Dan Neely really knows what's going on. Dan Dan's great. So that's rant number one. Rant number two is please be careful with all these massive 90% off sales. Um, it's really easy to get customer burnout. And what I mean by that is you'll end up with thousands of patches and gigabytes of samples that you were never going to use in the first place that you now own. And it makes it so when something shows up that you would like to buy, you go, oh, I, I have so many sounds. I don't know what to do with all these sounds. I bought these for $18 and I bought these for $18 and now I have... 380 gigabytes on my hard drive of samples I don't know what to do with. And so you stop being a customer when something comes out that you want to buy. So buy things that you want to buy, things that you're going to use. Investigate what it is you're getting. <clears throat> Some of these things, it's like you get them and then like 
If I wanted to make a library in a day, <clears throat> I could. It'd be really easy to take one patch, you change the waveforms, change the envelope a little bit, save it. Change the waveforms, change the envelopes, save it. Change the waveform, especially if you're doing like an EDM library or something where they're all the same. It takes no time at all to spit out a whole bunch of patches. Um, I don't work that way. I start everything from scratch. Each patch has its own personality. I give it birth, basically. Um, in some cases, with some of the chill stuff, I did go in derivative directions, but it's like you can't follow the tree from one patch to the other because it's pretty extreme. But be careful what you buy. Customer burnout is a real thing. And if you guys get burned out, then you just sit there when new and innovative stuff comes out and don't do anything because you already have so much already. And so I'm, I'm really careful to make sure that where I put out something, it fits something I haven't done before. I don't have a lot of, you know, EDM volume eight, you know, <laughs> that's what I call music volume 85. So be aware of customer burnout when it comes to these massive sales. Just, just, just a heads up. I, I care for you guys and I don't want it to get to where your like eyes are glazed over and it's like, I'm done. I need to write something with all these things that I bought for $15. Um, write something with those things you bought for $15 See what you've got, and that way you know where you might need something else in the future. Keeps people like me doing what I'm doing instead of working at a music store. So, thank you for that thought. Um, anyway, so what we're going to be talking about, this is a short live stream. I've got a really fun fundraising event to go to today. Oregon Humane Society has a thing where they've partnered up with all of these wineries here in Oregon, out in the Hillsdale, Beaverton area. There's like 30, 40, 80, this crazy, crazy number of wineries. There's like maybe 15 or 20 of them on the list that um, are doing a thing called Canine Uncorked. And you go to a winery and they have all sorts of fun activities, fingernail clipping, trimming stuff, all sorts of like courses to run for your pets. So I'm going out there with my dog to have some fun. Oh, thank you, Greg. Craig, appreciate that. Um. <laughs> yeah, big easy. So I'm going to be stopping a little bit before 11 so that I can go and do all these other things that are going on today. So thank you for showing up early. I can't believe there's over 30 of you here early. Um, why would they clip my toenails? Well, Bruce, um, yeah, we'll talk later, okay? Hey, so... The idea for this live stream is I want to show you some ideas with different patches and how to pers excuse me, how to personalize them to your own productions, to things that you're working on, things that you want to do. And so there's there's all sorts of fun ways to do this and it's really crazy easy. So we're looking at to start with spiritual rush hour, which is really cool. I made a handful of oh, I have one more thing. This is a tip for those of you there's the people that are talking to me about crackling. They call up patches and there's crackling going on. Um, I have done a thing in the interest of uh, saving memory and I thought I was loading fewer maps and that the program that I'd set up was playing right, but for some people it's still a problem. So if you go here, let's say to one of the chili patches or something like that. Um, Maybe not this one. Well, anyway, let's go just to the grand piano, okay? So the eight foot, let's say the hardest. When you call it up, if you go down here and you hit this little magnifying glass on the A layer and you hit thin, thinning is turned on. And uh, let's see if we call up this CPU meter here. Uh, you can see when I'm playing. Oh, where'd you go? I want you on the front. Let's see, get this back where it's supposed to be. Let's see if I can set that right there. Um, if you turn sample thinning off, it actually loads more sample maps, but it seems to be, oh, come on, where are you at? More efficient. You 
saw that one spike where it went, went up high. I don't know, maybe I, I talked to Eric about it and he said there shouldn't be a difference. But for some people, they've reported that uh, sustain pedal, 64, when they let up, sometimes they hear additional like clicking, like DS, like audio. So, so this is the place to check and see if this works for you. If it works, can you please let me know? I'm trying to figure out if this is, if this is a real deal and if I should modify the libraries for everybody or not. Because um, most everything, if you go in, I have thinning turned on. Now, since this is a layer with lots of effects, it's more CPU heavy. A lot heavier, right? Now, let's turn off sample thinning and see if that makes a difference. It takes a little longer to load. I just heard an audio glitch. About the same. So be aware that that's one place you hit the magnifying glass right here and then go to the thin button and you can turn on what sample thinning does is you can set up rules as to how it's going to limit the sample maps and round robins or not which I don't think the piano has in the first place from what I can tell um, but this velocity uh, seems to control above a velocity a certain amount, it will thin out the sample maps. Um, so that can make a difference. If, if anything, turning sample thinning off will make something sound nicer just because there's more sample maps. So be aware of that when you're working with the library and l let me know anything you find on that subject, okay? Let's see what you guys are talking about. Um, so let's look at... these guys, which are really fun. These are the piano uh, multis. I'm on multi mode. BPM key, the piano cumulus. This is one where there's a grand piano on layer one that has the arp on. And then I have a chill, regular piano. On two, excuse me, I, I'm burpy this morning. Um, so if we go to layer two, we could easily change. The first place to change is you can play with a timbre. If you want to be a more thinner, like clavinet sound, you can shift the timbre to the right. If you want to be more like a felt piano, really fun to play with. So that's one place to look. If the other place is to open up the folder, choose Keyscape, so it just shows you the Keyscape library, and then go through this and try all sorts of different things. Let's try a Trimlo Tech piano. So this is gonna replace the regular piano with a... Not even done loading all the samples. So we'll wait a minute. Mm. There we go. So there's all of these to play with. Now the vinyl keyscapes are record noises. I don't recommend using these because they don't work very well as a. P Take your time purging its memory, apparently. Here's your piano with record noise. Yeah. 
And if you're trying to do some sort of a World War One sound score, then go for it. But like the vintage vibe electric piano. Now on something like this, it's really straight. So if you want to get like a nice, let's, let's turn it down a little bit. Because it's so boomy, you can hit the main button and enable the high pass filter. And don't let it go down there into the 50, 60 Hertz. Put it to like 180. Or 500, it sounds nice. And if you want motion, Go to the effects for A and call up like an analog course or the ultra course is great. Maybe a little bit less. So chorus does a really cool thing. Hear how the sound is just like it became a pool with a lot of reflections in it in the sound. Here's without it. it sounds like synth waveforms. It depends on what you want. A little bit of that motion. You can slow it down. The general rule is you can play slower. If you go faster, then you need to bring down the depth. So by using chorus and by controlling the high pass filter, you can shape sounds in really cool ways. Um, we could do something like, let's use Pennies from Heaven. Um, let's look at the busy elements. Let's change those around. So we'd hit solo. Here's the piano. So all the busy stuff is happening here on layer two. And layer two is two parts. There's a hang drum, which you hear kind of like the percussive-y kind of element. And there's a chirpy sound, which is the JD-800 Crystal Rhodes. So if we want to change that chirpy sound, make sure you're on Keyscape Library. Go through the list. Like, let's try contemporary Rhodes instead. See what that sounds like. Or the MKS Piano. Kind of went away. Why would it go away? Let's do this. To find out, let's hit the high pass filter off. There it is. So it doesn't have a lot. I'm using a high pass filter to get rid of the low frequencies. It's too high, so bring this down. And all of a sudden it shows up. You hit the frequency where there's sound, because you got to picture it this way. A high pass filter at 24 dB is a pretty extreme slope. And anything to this side of the low frequency spectrum is gone. So if you bring up the resonance, you can really accentuate this. So with resonance, here's without. I could use resonance to bring emphasis, more focus to this cutoff point. And it will overemphasize the sounds in the samples. Here it is without emphasis, without resonance. Now what I hear sounds like it's an octave low. So let's go over here to chorus. And there's all sorts of things. As you see as you move this filter, if something was bouncing around in there, that'd be kind of cool. So if we wanted to do that, let's use an LFO. Let's go modulate this with an LFO. And let's use random. Uh, right here. And let's make it legato, sync. Let's bring this in the middle like that. And let's set it to eighth notes. 
Maybe bring up resonance. That's a whole different vibe than what we started with, right? And we could go over here to the hang drum. There's all sorts of other variations on hang drums with airbrush, toothbrush. There's explorers. So there's all sorts of ways to just quickly change in the sound sources. I've got something in a whole different vibe. And if I went to layer one, to the piano, let's go to Keyscape, so we just stay within pianos. We could go to Rhodes, see what that would be like. Chimatron for chimes. Now we're in a whole different vibe, right? Be like a cool introduction to a song. So there's all sorts of ways to modify these patches. That's just what I, I just want to fill your idea, your brains with all sorts of possibilities. Now, the uh, the bass and splits are pretty much the same thing. These are are, are bass sounds. For the bass side of things, which is part one, you could go to Keyscape, go to the Keyscape library, hit Key Bass. There's four different basses. Uh, it's still loading stuff. We'll give it a minute. Keyscape has a lot of samples in it, so. <laughs> This is layered with a synth, so we can actually go over here to these. The, the way to tell, always look to the filter. And if the filter looks like it's down, just turn it off. And you can tell really quickly, oh yeah, the filter's been used. Really quickly you can tell. And the resonance will give you more of that round kind of tone, which is really cool. And remember with all this stuff that we're doing, when you're playing with these parameters and you're changing the sound, you're not changing anything in the multi that's saved to the hard drive. It's all in memory. It's all able to be changed and experimented with and explored with. You can't hurt these files. And, and, and if you did hurt the files, you would, you could go to the website and re-download the library or just reinstall it if you needed to. But it's really fun to explore. You're not hurting anything. Nothing's going to blow up. Nothing's going to break. Nothing on your heart. These files, the only way to overwrite this would be to go up here, go Save Multi, and make sure that it has the same name. Everything's slow today has the same name and it's in the same folder you'd hit save and it says oh wait this already exists i'd have to click replace and then it would replace it but until i did that it won't so you can explore and play away and not hurt anything okay so feel free to get into these things explore things see what's going on and Now this is one where I'm using the brightest bright piano, which is using this really cool trick to get this extra hammer noise. I didn't save it this way, but let's have fun. Let's go copy this layer. Let's go to C and turn on and paste this layer. Now it's even brighter. So I put an octave higher of the hammer time. It's 
So it's really easy <laughs> to mess things up if you want. I mean, you can get nuts, you know. Like you got clothes wire attached to the hammers now, right? So it's really fun. It's fun to experiment and do fun things like that. Uh, let's go to the multis. We got 30 minutes left. I'm gonna show you how we can mess up the BPM splits. These are I, I call them like instant jams. These are the things that Dead Mouse said are the uh, the the destruction of our industri industry. Uh, yes, uh, the 220 from Roland, that's very old, but it did have a lot of good piano sounds in it. Um, let's do Space Complex. This is a fun one because it's using rhythmic envelopes and all sorts of things. Oh, why are you not loading up? You're supposed to have loaded up. Interesting. Hello, Keyscape. Uh huh. Interesting. We have a. <laughs> All right. Space complex. All right. Now we're there. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Sometimes memory gets fragmented and uh, yeah, <laughs> that happens. Yes, so show MIDI is showing me the keys that I'm playing. I'm playing a um, Korg M3 keyboard controller. It's actually busted in that the uh, capacitors for the touchscreen died. So I can't even touch the touchscreen to change it. Um, so it's a really cool thing that it, it, for example, if I set this to external real-time control, um, this is sending out MIDI CC74, which you don't see unless I set this up to be CC74, and now you see it. So I can't even change what MIDI CC numbers this M3 are sending, which is actually pretty cool because it shows what the, the other piece of software we have that we've created called ModMate can do, where I could say, I want to take CC74 on the input and reroute that to CC1. And now this is sending out and being rerouted to MIDI CC1. So if I'm playing, I have to check the box right here. And now it's sending out CC1. Now this other, this is in case you have hardware that's not set up to one, two, four, and 67, and you don't know the software, how to set it up. You can use our free software called ModMate to, to take care of stuff like this. For example, let's see here. Um, as I move this, this is CC71. This is my second fader. The first one was 74. The second, see how 74 now moves this? I want 71 to move CC number two. 
So right here is your input and right here is your output. So I could go to my input and say 71. And now this shows up. And then I click the little box right here, which says, I want this to send out CC2. So now when I play. This is doing a distortion on the lead sound. Right? Now, if I'm just running my sequencer, let's see, what, what, what did I put into here? Are you gonna play? Oh, this is, uh, I had a, a jam going that I jammed to in the uh, beginning of the patch walkthrough video, and that's that chord progression, which is a cool song. I actually wanna turn that into a demo, so I'm not gonna delete it. Um, but if I'm on here, as I go to MIDI channel two, if I move these, nothing's recorded. These are only playback. But they're also being used to reroute from a real controller. So if I move these, that's actually recorded as MIDI CC data because I'm using real MIDI CCs being put into it. So be aware if you use ModMate, this is only for auditioning and playing. Um, if you want it to actually be recorded into your sequencer, you have to have a real hardware setup. And you can actually do it in multiple passes with just the mod wheel if you wanted to. Um, or maybe you couldn't. You could if you set all of these up. So that is, let's see, changes to MIDI CC1. Because now I have my MIDI CC1. I have the box checked for all four lanes. So one physical, you have to have something that can be sending actual CC data that shows up here. You see when I move these, no CC or automation data. And I've talked to Shane and we're trying to figure out if there's a way to register the parameters in here for automation with the sequencer. Cause it seems to me if you can register the parameters for other plugins, you should too. But MIDI effects work differently. They're over here in the MIDI effect place. They're not in the instrument place and they're not in the audio effect place. So they work a little differently, I guess. Um, so you have to have an actual physical hardware slider if you want to record it into your sequencer for playback, right? But that's why these little boxes are pretty cool because you could set this up. And now I'm, I'm just with my mod wheel. This is like back in the other libraries where we can... recorded all of that so I can go to it recorded all of it because I'm using a mod wheel to actually play stuff so if you want to without using I'm using over here this is the other fun situation that I have one let's reroute this to two uh, and turn off all the check boxes so it's just through putting it's just letting me see activity it's not, I'm actually not having it reroute to something else because it's it's the same CC numbers. It's, it's going in and out. And so I'm using the Nanimit Instruments Machine Jam. Korg makes a really cool little nano control that has faders. Um, I think Akai has controllers that have faders as well. All those things have the, the setups that you can play these and... And this is, this is a first, I think at least for my libraries, there's sounds in this that, I mean, even with percussive, we did this some, but not to the point of this. There's hi-hats and there's, in some of these cases, I think part of the world circle you started up. Um, let me uh, get started. No, uh, I live in Minima. Yeah. There's hi-hats. So that's totally hidden when you call it up. On CC67. So the 
There's things hidden. You need controllers to really get the most out of these. And so I just want to spend a little time making sure that you guys are... Um, uh, uh, I installed the ModMate plugin, but the faders are not affecting the sound. Um, in Studio One, I'm not sure how MIDI effects work in Studio One. I tell you, I cannot wait. We're getting closer. Check this out. We're getting closer and closer for um, Unify to be out because all of these questions of how to use something within different plugins will be gone because all you have to do with this is turn on the MIDI layers and now you can add ModMate. You could add whatever you wanted and it's there to work with as a MIDI effect. Uh, Cthulhu, let's say, you know, I want to change this uh, to extra records, Cthulhu. And now I have Cthulhu and I could say on the synth I want to use, oh, I want to use, um, let's and check this out. So we now have so that you can change your uh, setup. The, the wording's not right, we're changing the order, but if I say my factory voicing set, now when I go to this list, it's much smaller of my effects that I'm showing. So I could say I want to just use Repro 5 and... And then all I have to do is say right here, go to MIDI 1, and I'm using Cthulhu. So all of you guys with Ableton Live, with Cubase, maybe with Studio One, I don't know how it works. You can just load up an instrument effect. You can load any instruments you want, any layers you want, and have two MIDI effects going simultaneously. And it is so freaking fun. You can go to Cthulhu, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Cthulhu, but Cthulhu is a sick puppy. Uh, it has chord maps capabilities so that you could choose chord presets. Like these are all different chorales from Bach pieces. I'm gonna get my release shorter. What it does, you can actually import any MIDI file into Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu is insane. Cthulhu is one of those things Steve Duda did before Serum. That is just insane. Uh, it can load up a MIDI file and every event in the MIDI file becomes a chord map on the keyboard. And then up here is your arpeggiator choices. How it's going to work, what it's going to do. There's random, there's octaves, there's pitch, there's even whether you want things to be late, timing-wise. For changing the field to be what you want, it's crazy. So all of these will be available for you to play with with any synthesizer using Unify. So that is around the corner. All the Ableton Live people using two freaking instrument channels, all the people with Cubase having to use two instrument channels and route them properly to get MIDI of, of that, that's all gone. That will be gone. So that's just right around the corner. So I'm excited for that day. Uh, sorry for the dark ages we are all in with MIDI effects. This is going to usher in a really cool new world when that happens, okay? So that's coming. <laughs> As to how it works with, with the specific thing, I don't know, but... Um... Now, this is another one. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm an innovator. It's just, I've seen this hole, and it's like, you know, nobody's covered it. And Shane had the idea, and I'm like, it'd be cool if we could do this on the iPad is where it started. And he goes, well, we could also do it on the Mac, and I have it running now. And so we went from there, so... This is one where, again, hi-hats are hidden. This one also has a hidden kick and snare on 67. So this is one where you really need controllers. And I love this one so much because... 
The second melody is so cool on part two. The, um, oh wait, but it's not the sound that's being used. It's the synth of redemption right here, part five. So this is doing a simple thing. Mod envelopes. If I wanted to, I could go here to pitch. Let's see, show the modulation. Now there's a couple things we could do. I could reroute this instead of fine pitch to pitch course. And now, watch this, it's gonna be nuts. It goes way high, I have the whole range. So I could put this to an octave. Let's set this to be exactly an exact parameter value of 0.125. Unify can be used live, in fact. So here's the thing with Unify. I have a, a specification set that's pretty much set in stone for 1.0. And then I have a huge list bigger than what it comes with that I will be adding <laughs> in time. We want to make it so it can be uh, the hub of a setup for a live shows, for multiple keyboards plugged in. And you can push a button and it will do all sorts of calling up the right effects that you need for each person's setup. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that's going to be coming. So um, we're starting here and it's going to grow. Uh, that's all I can say. So yes, it will be a really cool hub in the future for a live show. Uh, let's go back to fine pitch. Fine pitch is only one semitone. That's why it works so nice for this. But we could do other things, like we could choose different waveforms. We go to a digital wave table. There's all sorts of places we could go with this. Maybe you want this melody to happen a little sooner. So you just use the snap. And let's add another segment that brings it back down. There, so we have a different melody. Now the bass is on part one. This is using all sorts, as you can see, it took a long time to program this. I have it doing kind of like a, there's a bit of a kick in the sound. Like if we solo this, it's got a little bit of a pulse. So where could we modify this? This is one of those where Maybe this fifth. If you hit snap, this will keep it on timing values. Let's have that one be just octaves. And if you hit fine, you can now move this up and down in fine steps. Right? Now let's turn off fine and turn back on snap. Let's have it up higher, like 2100. So you can change the melody. If you want to get more extreme than this, and I have a lot of extra points in here, you could get rid of these. Let's have this one be like four pole. <laughs> That's cool. So you can play things really pretty. It's, it's, 
you know? So, <clears throat> the main idea for these grooves was to have some sort of a cool synth. And I'll show you some really cool tricks with noise hi-hats. Check this out. So, I've learned over the years that one thing that makes really cool hi-hats is flangers and stuff. So let's go over here and let's say modulation. And this is one of these LFOs that can be set to frozen, zero. This means you can now play with the depth. And because this is using an arpeggio that's playing 16th notes, that opens up all sorts of crazy ideas. Set this to random. You get all sorts of really cool frozen. Bring this down to be less strength. So now it's a different sounding. Now this is the kick and the snare, which is happening on part two. So let's go to part two. Here's my kick and my snare. And there's all sorts of things you can do to modify these. Um, a famous shape for the 808 type of snare is to give it more like a multiple burst. Right? If you want to shape it more, go over here and add on the layer B. Go to filter, power filter. Give yourself a resonant filter. After all the synthesis stuff, stuff taking this. And then you could modulate the cutoff with whatever you want, like the filter envelope. So I got this kind of snappy, chiffy thing. So bring. There's all sorts of ways to modify the drums. And if you're talking about the pattern itself, it's hard velocities for the kick, soft velocities for the snare. So I could say, modify the drum pattern very easily and remember we now have all the tools here we could set this to the step dividers to be two and then step divider four Make that three. There's all sorts of possibilities to what you can do now with all the tools.
And if I want the bass line to be different sound wise, I think this is one. I'm using a really dark waveform. So you go over here to edgy. Turn on unison. All sorts of possibilities. If I wanted to do more of this serum kind of thing, I could modulate this with an LFO, set it to be legato. Modulate this that same LFO. So go modulate this with LFO one. <laughs> Get a little more edgy. Okay, so there's all sorts of places to take these. If you um Go to, let's go to another library, like one of the OMG libraries. Let's go to OMG volume one. Let's say, let's go to something like convict. This is one where there's a drum groove. This is one of the libraries where everything's on the mod wheel. So this one, you just use the mod wheel. Now, the fun thing with the OMG libraries, you can go to the kick pattern, It's that easy to make the pattern. Here's one of the hi-hats. And because we're now in the land of Omnisphere 2.6, we can use these step dividers. Actually, it's too fast. They also had these rise and falls, which rise and fall in volume. Fall three. There. So you can modify the drum patterns. And if you want, it's super easy to modify the sounds. Like this is using this snare. Just make sure you go over here to the OMG Volume 1 library. OMG Volume 1. And here's all the snares. Yeah, now it does this weird thing. Just be aware. You gotta start and stop your sequencer. Um, when you change samples, it turns that note off but everything else is set latch on. So now you have this opposite happening. So the rule is to change the sound when, the, when you're not playing that and then play. Okay. And also, I don't know if you know, oh, you can't do it here for the patches. Go to drum one, kick. Make sure you're also looking at OMG volume one. Now, you can do this easy enough, right? 
if you own other libraries, you can use those drum sounds. So you could go to OMG RMX, which has all these really big, deep sub kicks, right? Stuff like all these big booms. And I want my snare to be a little bit more modern urban. So I just go over here. I'm on part two snare. All you have to do is change your library to the RMX library and go down here to the snares. They're all organized alphabetically, so it's easy to find them. And because everything else is modular as well, you could go to this bass part and easily say, no, I want to use one of these from this library that I bought, RMX. So I could go down here to the BPM bases. There's bases and there's BPM bases. And... Now I've got this cool hybrid mix. I started with OMG volume one, but now I'm adding urban kind of patches. And then I could go to the keyboard, which is this nice bell sound. <clears throat> I could go to colors. I could go to one of these cool things like... Uh... I don't have the CPU play that. It's killing my computer. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, not that one. Um. Okay. Wow, what a great way to end the live stream. Um, by the way, Manfighter Music, that is our dear friend, Bob Didis. He's working on a demo. We'll be hearing that this coming week. Can't wait to share it with you. Um, sorry for the crashing. We're just pushing Omnisphere a little harder than it's used to with a live stream on the computer happening at the same time. Uh, time for me to go. I have to head out of the door to get to all these other events that are happening today. I hope this gave you guys some good food for thought, and it was fun to watch me crash my computer a couple times. <laughs> uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Thank you. Let's do our shout-outs real quick. Shout-out from Portland, Oregon. Peace, love, and fat piano wishes to all of you from Holland. Bruce up in Washington. Awesome. Yeah, my daughter was just up there, actually. She was staying on Guimas Island for some days. It's really nice. North Carolina. Camino in Washington. Nice. Cool, guys. So good. So, Cox, it's not so late for you. <laughs> Stephen, Oregon as well. Canada. Good to see Thom. Good to see all you guys. Be well. And we'll see you in the next live stream. And sorry for making this at a weird time and being short, but thank you for your understanding. I appreciate it. 
Uh, there's one more week with colors at its introductory $32 price, and then it goes up to $39 retail. Thank you to all for your support. Keeps me in business, keeps me doing my gig, making new stuff. So be well, and I'll see you soon.